20 is the number which Eric Keller, the owner of Enthusiast Auto Group, and myself share. He's been in the car business for 20 years, mainly BMWs, and I've been in the film business for 20 years. So come together our combined efforts of putting these two uh, 20 years of experience from each uh, world together, and that is what brought us together for making this happen. Right now, I'm on the freeway together with one of my cinematographers, Danny, up to uh, Monterey, California. And of course, you can see all the cars driving really fast next to us. To meet my great friend, Eric Keller, the founder and owner of Enthusiast Auto Group, one of the premier classic BMW and modern BMW uh, dealers, sellers, and enthusiasts in the world. Uh, I don't think there's anybody in the BMW world that does not know Enthusiast Auto Group, Eric Keller, and his brother, Evan Keller. Um, about a year ago or so, 18 months ago, uh, we became acquainted friends through uh, the BMW E31, which is the main passion that I share. Uh, suddenly, out of nowhere, on social media, I saw posting for uh, BMW A50 CSI, a red on white, uh, come up for sale, and it says enthusiast, uh, set enthusiast auto group on it. Obviously, I knew who they were, but CSIs and E31s being my main specialty, I just had to call and make an introduction to let them know had nothing to do with business or anything. It was pure uh, joy call, calling and letting them know if they need any information or any help or anything in regards to that CSI. I have all the build sheet of the entire 225 car range of CSIs in the USA, USA. And I said, I'll send you all the information on it. I'll send you the background, the history, anything you need. In fact, I also have a phone for the car. So that was the start of our friendship. And I said, I have a red CSI myself. And that started our friendship, which has now been 18 months in the making. Over the course of these 18 months, I've done about 20 to 25 or so classic car passion films, which has caught the attention of Eric Keller. And throughout this time, we've been talking to each other about possibly getting together and making some type of a classic car passion film on EAG, Enthusiast Auto Group. Uh, Fast forward, time goes, fall comes, winter comes, winter time, you know, snow in Ohio, not possible. I've been talking about going to um, Cincinnati a few times, didn't happen. Suddenly, uh, Monterey rolls around and Eric calls me and tells me, this is our second Monterey together, how about we uh, strike? and make this happen. Let's do a passion film together. And it was a perfect opportunity. I had my uh, equipment, my crew, my friends, everybody ready. Uh, so we have about a few more hours to go. I'm on the road. Hopefully we'll get there safe and sound and nothing will happen. And this will be the film you guys are going to see. Thanks a lot. ones uh, I ever saw that left a really really strong impression on me believe it or not were the old French Citroëns because they were so rare you know growing up in San Francisco and there were a few on the street my dad thought they were the ugliest things he'd ever seen you know and the other one that left the really strong impression on me was the uh, his first new car which was a 1959 Chevy Parkwood station wagon and we roamed the country you know in that thing you know as kids and but uh, my first car is the one that I think, until probably this car, has left the strongest impression with me, and that was a 64 Chrysler New Yorker Salon that had the 365 horsepower 413 Mopar V8 in the thing, weighed almost three tons and would burn rubber. <laughs> and, uh, and of course it nearly bankrupted me as a 17 year old, took every cent that I, uh, I made to put gas in the car and to you know, keep it running because it was always needing something. So, uh, you know, then of course I discovered BMWs and I've been in love ever since. My dad, as the story stereotypically goes, I mean, we always had cars, we were always going to car shows, going to uh, auctions every year annually with the family, dad, Evan and I. And uh, he just taught us everything that he knew and we just 
had a great time together, you know, fam family bonding. And <laughs> I mean, it was, it was, it brought us together and it was a, a thing that we just always did. And the connection, obviously, both with my brother and I, with dad, dad finally started making a little bit of money, graduated from lower middle class to middle class and he bought a BMW Ooh. and uh, it was an E39 actually it was, really it was a, yeah. oh wow it was a, it was a 97 Aspen Gray 540 automatic and we bought it from the BMW dealer it was a couple years old uh, two years old maybe one year old yeah, and uh, he was an early adopter yeah, like yeah 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 and uh, we had great memories in that car he sold it and you know he made a little bit of money and he didn't buy it to make money but he just bought it right bought the right car <laughs> and we, he's always been doing that and we'd always been doing that trading a lot of cars you know mom and, and her job so I had like 17 or 18 cars in high school and you know I automotive attention deficit disorder <laughs> AADD and I wasn't buying them or selling for profit I just I wanted to try every car out there and so uh, so my dad made some money he bought another 540 after that a E34 and so I liked that car a lot so I bought my first E34 M5 um, or sorry is an E34 525 mm. it was a 92 non Vanos mm. it was a it's an okay car 100,000 miles and I drove it and I thought I was the coolest dude in college and uh, running around my roommate and stuff and jamming music, driving a BMW for freshman year. I'm like, all right, this is all right. <laughs> so I uh, ended up selling it to one of my business professors and made some money. And I'm like, huh, yeah, let's uh, focus on it. And then I bought an E28 M5 and it just... And that's where the business bug comes. Yeah, that's, comes uh, yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's why I went... Yeah. Yeah. I always loved being around cars. I, I built more model cars than cars I ever owned, of course, naturally. And I was always really into, into the design of them. So between my, my little um, wood-burning tool and my X-Acto knife, I redesigned just about every model I ever built. You know, and growing up in San Francisco, we had access to some fantastic uh, car shows. And, uh, and, you know, growing up in the 60s, I mean, cars were all over television. I mean, you know, one of my one of my favorite shows. It still affects me to this day, because I fell in love with the Rolls Royce Silver Cloud back then, and that was Burke's Law. You know, the homicide captain, Hollywood police, uh, you know, Beverly Hills police, excuse me, and he went to all of his crime scenes in a chauffeur-driven Silver Cloud too. And uh, I thought, yeah, that's pretty cool. Cars can be really, really cool, and really cool people can drive them. So I think that really, really uh, affected me. And when I was in television as a, in the early days as a reporter, um, you know, planes, trains, and automobiles were, were the area, were the, the coverage area. So I ended up covering BMW, got to know it as a company, never expected I would go to work for it, uh, but then of course uh, did. And, uh, you know, that was almost 20 years, uh, basically. So learned not just about cars, but about the car business. And of course had the pleasure too of of, of largely creating the historic car collection here for BMW in the in the U.S. And, uh, now that I'm retired, of course, my successors, you know, have custody of the of the, the fleet, the collection, and all of that. And uh, of course, I drive a BMW naturally, and probably will for the rest of my life. But always having been involved with the enthusiast community, I mean, you know, you can't show up in a new BMW at a classic car event. So, for personal credibility, you know, it was a matter of finding which one it could only be one and you know through all the years of in my head I went through every one of them that I knew that I loved that I drove and ultimately it all kept kept coming back to the E39 M5 I mean mm -hmm. that was really the car and then then I found you and then I found the cars that you guys have and uh, went from you know that whole page full of them five and then ultimately when I came up to see you, it was the, down to the three. And uh, this one very quickly became, yeah. became the, the car of choice. And, yeah. uh, you know, and now we're showing it publicly for the first time. It's, yeah. it's magnificent. It, I, you know, having known these E39 M5 since the day they were new, I don't think it would have looked this good when it was new, quite honestly. I mean, it looked brilliant in its, in, its, in its days. <laughs> But with the ceramic coating on top of it, I mean, to protect the finish, and hopefully it'll look like this for the rest of its life. I, I wanted to do everything that I, well, I didn't want to do it. I, I just did everything that I knew I didn't want to do to, you know, get where I'm at. And, uh, you know, we grew up kind of on the farm, and uh, we did all the farming stuff. We worked at our dad's shop until we were, like, 14, and he fired us, both Evan and I. 
and told us to go get a real job. And uh, you know, sorted potatoes, detasseled corn, um, uh, waited tables at multiple places. And, and uh, not that I was a bounce all over the place. I usually had two jobs at the same time because <laughs> The more jobs I had, the more money I made. The more money I made, the more cars I could buy. The more go. cars I could yeah. buy, the happier I was. <laughs> and so I just did, I literally did all those jobs because I wanted to have a cool car. And uh, I bought my first car cash. Uh, Dad gave me a thousand bucks and I added the rest. That was our 16th birthday present. I gave Evan a thousand bucks. And, uh, you know, getting through all the different cars, I, you know, having so many in, in high school, I mean, I just, I learned all the different things about them. And, I didn't like this, didn't like that, sold it. And then I drove a BMW and I was like, oh. And I drove an E28 M5 and I was like, oh. And after that E28 M5, which was my second BMW, it's like all M, all the time, just find all the best ones. Yeah. Because I wanted to drive them. I, yeah. want, I mean, I, I wasn't, I got to drive it all the time while I was fixing it up. And that was my daily driver, whatever I was selling at that time. And, uh, you know, it, it definitely is like the best blessing you could ever have in turning your job or your hobby yeah. into your uh, and passion into your career and um, you know we've worked really hard to do what we've done and, and selling a car to him means a lot to me yeah I mean well I and, and I, I know you're, you're choked up about it a little bit because I am too and I think about it because one of the things I want to say is I like the way you do your business I like the way you sell the cars and this is just a very personal not necessarily a testimonial but it's but it's based on my own experience I mean the fact that we sp I've never spent 11 hours with somebody as I was getting ready to buy a car as we did the day that I yeah. really decided that, that, that this was the one that was a lot of fun it was a lot of fun but what I really appreciated is you were not going to let me decide until you were absolutely sure that I knew for sure because I started off to buy an entirely different one. Yeah. And you know, I was like, no, no, you need to drive a little more. And we drove a little more and we drove a little more and slowly, actually very quickly, in fact, it washed in that the one that I set out to buy was not the one that I ultimately wanted. It was, uh, it was this one. And uh, I appreciate that fact that you were with me throughout the entire journey and weren't going to let me go until you were sure I was going to reach the right conclusion. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and of course I did, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've, and we've, I very much appreciate it. Well, uh, absolutely. I mean, it's a two-way street. I mean, we've done so many laps um, with clients and selling them a car and you know, uh, helping them throughout their ownership experience. And you know, they've had a great time with the car and we're always there to support them. But you know, six months after a guy buys a car, he's like, yeah, you know, just eh. I mean, so learning from all those different things, I want to make sure people get into the right car, their car best fit. And uh, you know, all learning from others and you know, getting to, yeah. to you know, having these conversations, uh, you know, I, I as much as most people would would <laughs> laugh at, I mean, I do actually listen a lot. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I talk a lot too, but I've got a lot to say with the, these cars because I've been yeah. you know addicted to them for so yeah. long. But well, we all know people that have had regret. Yeah. after they bought a yeah. car. Buyer's remorse. And uh, yeah, so, you know, to know, and, and most, the dealer does not typically really care that much. He wants to make sure, I mean, that you're happy and all that, but maybe only for that particular moment, you know. Right. You really kept a long-term term view, and that's why in the day when I left to go home that night, I knew that I had absolutely made the right decision and uh, never had a second doubt. You slept well that night. Yeah, I slept. Perfectly. Ever since then, you know, and I'll sleep better once I finally get this home, <laughs> can, and I can see it in my garage every morning. So. The, the time we've had here in uh, Carmel and Monterey for Pebble Beach Car Week. I mean, anytime Ken has been around this car, I mean, he's car drunk. He's car drunk. Anytime he, he people are talking to him mid sentence, he just goes and gets in the car and shuts the door, and he just sits behind the steering wheel. He starts the car up and he just. He's, I mean, for like, I mean, he's got, you got, he's got two hours of seat time not in motion since this car's yeah, been in California. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and that's, that is part, that's, that's, that, that's, 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 why that's, do it. that's part of these guys. I mean, the, these are works of art. I mean, they are brilliant performance cars. They're brilliant driving cars. They're very civilized driving cars, but they are works of art. Yeah. This is one of the most beautiful designs BMW has ever made. And certainly the S62 engine yeah. in this is, is one of the greatest engines of all time. I love to tell the story of my friend who was uh, the, uh, <laughs> the BMW engineer, one of the highest level engineers in the company, who's still one of my dearest friends. He's also retired from BMW. And when I wrote him a quick email to tell him and sent him a picture of this car, I expected to get this big effusive, wow, congratulations, you know, you really ended all that stuff. And I mean, it was, he very quickly responded and it was just one 
sentence, actually a sentence and a half basically, and he just simply said this, Ken, the M5 you have bought is a Bavarian masterpiece. Treat it wisely. That was it. That was all he said. And uh, that has stuck with me, you know, and yeah. I will do that. It is a Bavarian masterpiece. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the engineering... All right, I'm drunk now, so yeah. I guess I, I, should, I should just go. You just want to go drive. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that, uh, you know, the E39, it just it does everything well. I mean, if you're going to have one car, this car does all of that really well. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm super proud and, and glad that we've connected because more than, you know, what it means to sell, you know, the guy that's been spokesperson for the brand for 10 years, I mean, that's awesome because you've been, you know, very instrumental in BMW's history in building the collection, outfitting yeah. the Zentrum. Yeah. I mean, you know, you've done all the best, coolest jobs at BMW, yeah, frankly. I, I, I mean, you have. I think so, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah and, and, and so, you know, getting the phone call from you, actually the email um, from Eric Wensberg, uh, he, you know, M brand director for the heyday of from the late yeah. 80s to the late he 90s. He himself is a legend. He is. Yeah. I mean, he created the lightweight. Yeah. I mean, he brought yeah. the E36 M3 yeah. to North America. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm really happy to call him a good friend now. And uh, so he sends an email, like the layup email of all layup emails. <laughs> you know, hey, Eric, uh, here's my one of my dearest friends. You know, treat him as just you would treat me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, my reply to him, uh, you know, off the thread was, yeah, I treat all my clients that way, Eric, but yes, I will absolutely take good care of them. And uh, uh, so I think we emailed yeah. um, that day. Yeah. And we spoke later that day or the following day. And I think we talked for what? Well, then we talked every afternoon for two to three hours. Yeah. Well, yeah, we, we weren't talking about M5s really much of the time. I, I told Eric, I said, this is the longest I've spent on the phone unless I was with an angry reporter. Right. You know, and usually from, well, I won't say which newspaper, but anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, and this was a lot more fun. And, uh, and the end result is I have a car for life and I have a friend for life at the same yeah, time, absolutely. too. Absolutely. And I appreciate that. Yeah, no, much. it's likewise, man. Thank, Thank you. you. Awesome, awesome.